Right, typically, I've got a slight issue as I'm turning the wing nut, it's absolutely C solid. Right guys, I'm actually at one of my properties, this is one of my own personal properties that I rent out. This is a three bedroom semi-detached. The reason of the video is basically to highlight how, you know, how to treat tenants and if you treat tenants well, tenants treat you really well. Yeah, I'll just give you an example of that now. So I'm just going to go in the house and I'll show you uh, the type of thing I mean. So I got a, an email the other night just saying the toilet wasn't working correctly. So me being me, you know, I responded within 10 minutes of receiving the email. And then a couple of days I'm here, I'm going to fix the, the toilet. It wasn't urgent, you know, I always ask if it's urgent. And this one wasn't, so. Uh, last year the washing machine wasn't working, so we instantly bought a new washing machine. And bought a new matching tumble dryer. And just got it in, you know, within a couple of days. So what I'm trying to say here is we, we really look after our tenants um, in our rental properties. And it, it pays, you know, immensely. It pays dividends. I mean, financially it may cost us a bit more. But we'll just give you an example. Um, I mean, I've just turned up to fix the toilet. As I should, you know, it's my, my responsibility. So they've left me a really nice letter here. I'll, I'll cover that. It's a bit... Um, just to protect their privacy again, you know. Nice bottle of Jack Daniels and some chocolates there, you know. So... It just shows they're really appreciative, appreciative, and you know, it goes a long way. So it's a two-way thing here. Basically, the issue here is uh, what the the guy's saying is the toilet keeps running, you know, after being flushed. So it's probably just a washer in the bottom of the flush unit. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to replace the whole flush unit. Right. So the first job is obviously empty the cistern of water. Um, I normally use a wet fact for this, but it's, I'm doing a renovation at the moment and I've left that on site. Uh, so for this one, it's the good old sponging bucket method. Uh, this is the flush system that we'll put in. Uh, I might carry a stock of these uh, at home, just for these types of occasions. Um, these are really reliable. Um, I, I do tend to stick to Fluid Master uh, with flushes and uh, fill, fill valves. Right, I've got the majority of the water out of the toilet. Um, I can instantly see what the issue is here. Uh, it's the through bolts are corroding, as is normal in toilets, and you can see all the bits of rust and crud. You know, so what happens when you flush the toilet, the washer comes up, you know, the water goes out, the washer goes back down, you know, once the flush is complete, and some of this crud will get stuck under the washer, and that creates a, a small gap under the washer. Hence, the, the water will just keep flowing through the toilet. So in this instance, I could probably just get away with just cleaning out the, the cistern. Uh, just either replacing the washer or even just cleaning it and then it would be fine. But because I'm here and the, the tenants are away, I'm just going to take advantage of the time and, and just put a new flush unit in it. Totally clean all this out, renew the through bolts. And hopefully that will be service free, you know, for the next five years. Hopefully. Okay, so switch the water off. Luckily this toilet's got an isolation valve, so switch the water off. Undone the nut there to disengage the fill valve, and now we need to get these wing nuts off either side, which can sometimes be a challenge, but hopefully these will be okay. Oh, come on! Right, typically, I've got a slight issue as I'm turning the wing nut, it's absolutely C solid. So when I'm turning that, it's just turning this thread, if you can see that. So it's just. This is so corroded that the whole thing's just spinning, you know, as I turn it, so. We've got two options here. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try the. I've got Nedgesaurus pliers here, which will grip onto the thread like that, and then I'll get another set of pliers onto the wing nut and try and work it down. Uh, failing that, I'm going to just going to take the toilet right out and get the old angle grinder out and just cut these off. Um, I would use my multi tool, but again, I'm, I'm doing a renovation. I've left them uh, on a, on site. Um, it's typical, you just think uh, this, a job like this is going to take, you know, a small amount of time with no problem. Right, I failed with the engineer's pliers, so that's not going to work. So I think what I need to do is, I'm going to have to use the angle grinder and cut these out. I just don't have my multi-tool with me. Yeah, so I thought I would just pull the toilet out. But typically, it's totally sealed to the floor. And the, the bolts that hold it, the screws that hold it into the, the floor are absolutely corroded, so... I don't know, I might have to use my engineer pliers to get those out. Cut all the silicon and pull the toilet out. Um, it's just too cramped in here, I use a grinder on the back of here, so... Um, I'll figure it out. 
here we go. Grinder against Bolt. Uh, the difficult bit's going to be the other side, but we'll get it. Right, it's the first one. That's what remains of it. Uh, we can see we're free now. Uh, so now the tricky one is in this side. Right, grinder one. <laughs> we've got it off. Uh, I've, just, I've just taken it outside to flush all the crap out of it. Okay, so we've now got these bolts that I totally see, so I'm just going to nip them off with the grinder. I'm outside now. Yeah, that bottle of JD now looks like it should have been two. <laughs> Typical jobs like this. Yeah, you can see it's probably time this was replaced. See the mess of the, the corrosion's made at the end of that. So we'll get that done. What I'm doing now is just cleaning out the inside. Clean all that out. And we'll give the base a good clean as well. Okay, so here's the new flush we're going to be use, uh, using. Uh, the reason I like the Fluid Masters is uh, they come, you can either use them for inch and a half uh, toilets or two inch. Our toilet's actually a two inch uh, hole in the bottom of the cistern, so that's where we just replace this washer with this washer and that converts it into a two inch. So we'll take this washer off, put this one on, get it in the toilet and get it tightened down, snug down with that. Yeah, so you see our toilet here's got a two inch hole. Whereas that would rattle about, but with the fluid mass I can put this conversion washer on. You can see the lip there. Uh, and that gives you a nice snug fit. Obviously from the inside. <laughs> so that's it. Okay, so I'm just in the process of putting the through bolts in now. Uh, we've got the donut, the new donut wa washer on. Uh, through bolts basically go like this. Uh, this bolt will go in the inside of the cistern. This rubber washer, this washer are here like this. And this gets tightened up together. So all this gets tightened down. This will then slip through the toilet and then the, the wing nut can be tightened up which will tighten the washer down onto the toilet and not make the seal. That's what I love about these uh, Nipex plier wrenches. I mean, you can just set the jaws, turn the nut, but the beauty is just let go of the handles and then you can spin again. Tighten the handles together, it grabs, you know, without, without taking the thing, without taking the spanner off the actual nut. So, there's an adjustable spanner, you've got to keep taking it off, you know get it back on and then turn off, back on. Sometimes the jaws can loosen off, but these just get a perfect grip. Round, let the handles go, tighten. Round, let the handles go, round. Perfect. Right, we've got the toilet all fitted back together. Um, it's been using these mini Nipex Cobras for tightening these bolts up, these are perfect. You can see the size of them, they're tiny. They're great for small, small areas like that. So, well recommended. Anyway, back to this. Uh, the through bolts are tightened up. Which tightens up the rubber, uh, the new donut that's in there. Which creates the seal. Yeah, here's the new flush unit here. Just filled up with water, so we're just testing for leaks at the moment. You can see the new through bolts that we put in there. In there, um, that's what caused the initial problem. Uh, that metal part's corroding and obviously getting under the old flush unit and breaking the seal. So we'll give this a flush. I've just temporarily connected the button. So that's fine. It's fine. Just check for leaks. There's nothing. Where you would get a leak here is in the probably either the donut or the, the through bolts, you know. But I'm just feeling under the bolts there, they're bone dry, fine. So, all that's left to do now is I'll adjust the overflow. I'll wait till the water level gets up. I'll adjust this, just take it slightly above the, the water level. Okay, so these fluid masters, really easy. You just uh, clip, push this clip like that. See me lifting the overflow there. So we'll put it 
it's around about there, about an inch above the water. Push the retaining clip back, and that's it, that's done. So all we need to do, do now is uh, take the old button off the cistern lid, to fit the new button on, connect it all up and that'll be it. This is actually an old Fluid Master button, so it would fit. Uh, the flush would just fitted, but while I'm here, I might as well just fit the new one that comes supplied. Yeah, so basically we're just popping the, this is the new button, just push it through. The lid, and then there's a, a spacer that goes underneath. Which typically just screws on. So, so that tightened up. And then you can just lock it off with this small nut here, and that's it. Okay, so new flush buttons in. All that happens now is you just connect this, so push this in, place it on top, and then let that go, and that'll lock it in place. That's it. Done. And get the lid on. Okay, so that's it, so test it again. Right, so that's it guys. One bugger of a toilet. <laughs> but it does maybe shows you and highlights uh, the, the problems you can come up against. Um, with toilets, it always is usually those bolts, which are a pain. Uh, but hopefully I've demonstrated, you know, what you would do to get them off. I mean, there is many ways to get them off, but you saw the method I used, uh, just because that's what I had at hand. Uh, either a grinder or a multi-tool or a hacksaw normally, that's, that's what you would use. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, please give it a like. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you're new here, as usual. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.